Well, good morning, and uh, the peace of the Lord be with you. May God's peace be over you. And that's my prayer for you. My, that's my prayer for all of us. Uh, I'm sure it's been your prayer as well for peace. For the peace of God, which the Apostle Paul describes in his letter to the Philippians as a peace that transcends all understanding. You see, God's peace is harmony. It's the calmness of body, of mind, and spirit, trusting in the power and grace of God. It's God's peace. Back in 2001, the day was September 11th. I remember exactly where I was on that day. And I remember driving in my car and I was going to get a coffee before I went to uh, school. I was at seminary at the time. And I remember exactly where I was on the road. I remember the exact bend I was when I heard the news. Um, I was actually listening to a sports radio station and they kind of cut out. And it was, I don't know, around 8 o'clock or so in the morning. And it was just a, a shock. And um, perhaps you remember where you were that day when you heard about the planes hitting the towers in New York. Needless to say, for the rest of the day, my classmates and I were glued to the television. Months after September 11, psychologists reported that people who lived thousands of miles away from these tragic events, where, where these planes hit the buildings, they were coming to these sites. They were unable to sleep. They were paralyzed by fear. Now, here in the year 2020, in the face of the pandemic called COVID-19, many are, once again, there's, there's a paralysis. People are paralyzed by fear. There's an underlying sense of apprehension and anxiety wherever you go, to varying degrees. But there's not just concern about the medical threat we face, there's deep concern about the huge economic impact upon us personally. There's also the concern of what this is doing to people mentally and emotionally on one's ability to cope. I mean, how long are we going to have to live this way? And all of this can so easily make it feel like the waves are crashing over us. And what we very much want is to experience the serenity from looking over a still, calm lake. So as Christ followers, what is the answer to the fear that so easily stifles? Well, I wanna invite you to think about what the gospel writer Luke writes in chapter 24. In his account in chapter 24, we read that Jesus has just been put to death and he has risen again. And we read that his disciples are all huddled together in fear behind locked doors. And there's this overwhelming sense in the place they're gathered of uncertainty, of despair. Their much-loved master, the rabbi, has been tortured to death on a cross. But suddenly, Luke writes the account that Jesus appears and he stands amongst them. They find his living presence. And he says these words, peace be with you. But they are scared out of their wits. I mean, I, I can only imagine. They are scared. He says, peace be with you. It was a traditional greeting, but this time it takes on a whole new significance because of Jesus' resurrection. Now, Jesus proceeds to talk further, to calm them, to tell them he's real, that he is not a ghost. To tell him that what he's saying is true, that he came to do what he said he would do to accomplish, that he would suffer and he would rise from the dead, that repentance of sin and the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. That's what he said. Peace be with you. Those words took on a whole new meaning. And the answer to the disciples' fears and all of our fears is found in a personal faith in the living, glorified Jesus Christ. We don't worship a dead Christ. 
We worship a risen Christ who has broken power of sin and death and is alive forevermore. So in the face of uncertainty with this pandemic, let's focus on the steadfast Savior. Jesus says to us, there's nothing to fear when our faith is in the one who controls it all. So I pray that today, um, that you know the deep abiding peace in God. That sense of peace you feel that doesn't make sense, but nevertheless is so real. I pray that you might feel lifted by God, even though nothing outwardly has changed. I'd like to just close with uh, this prayer. Um, I just invite you to pray with me. Dear God, it's your name that is honored from generation to generation. You alone are worthy of all glory and praise. And you are not shocked by the state of the world right now. Your ways are not our ways. You are not at a loss about what to do. Nothing is impossible for you. So today we are proclaiming that you will be glorified even amidst this pandemic. That your name will be known and praised throughout the earth. We pray that you would pierce the darkness with your light. Shine brighter than the fear of death, economic ruin, or a long quarantine. And when we look back on this moment in history, would we be filled with joy as we remember the revival and the peace that came out because of you through this season? And we pray that you continue to draw this hurting world back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So the peace of the Lord be with you, friends. Have a wonderful day.